Now, in terms of physical composition, there's two basic types of materials or sediments in the bottom of the ocean. You have muds and you have ooze. Muds are silt and clay mixed in with a little bit of biogenic sediments, um, and you find that all over the abyssal plains. And so, and this is usually fine grain, and they're usually products of the deposition and chemical weathering of rocks mixed in with a little bit of biogenic sediments. The greatest example of that is red mud, which you see an example of up here and also here. So these are red mud and although they, they're usually referred to as red mud, they actually can come in lots of colors depending on what the specific chemicals which are inside of them. So you actually see this one is a little more brownish and the other one is a, more, a little more reddish and there's even green and bluish uh, uh, mud also and it all depends on the specific chemicals which are part of the, that mud. And so that's a lot of the oceans is basically made of muds and most of the muds comes from, from or, or continental deposition or runoff. And then you have uh, ooze. Now ooze is basically those biogenic sediments when they gather up with a little bit of the, of the sand and they make uh, this muck looking thing that's in the bottom of the ocean and it's, it is sand. And there's two basic types of ooze. You have calcareous ooze, ooze and that's the one that's calcium based which because it's rich in calcium carbonate. Uh, and it usually forms uh, in shallow, shallower waters, uh, anything between three and five kilometers tops. Uh, and usually it's because of, or, um, because of those foraminians, because of those shelled animals. And they usually uh, grow in nutrient poor waters, like where coral would grow and things like that. And in the surface, it's only going to grow if it's a, a nutrient poor. And it doesn't grow very deep because it's, these are, are shelled organisms we're talking about. So uh, the pressure, it wouldn't be sustain, sustaining that. And so they usually live in the shallower areas where the algae would be nearby and it could eat the algae and things like that. So since they're uh, zooplankton and they need to eat, you don't, you're not going to find them deep in the water or, or, above, or, or on the open ocean where the algae is where. And therefore, they're not really going to fall all the way down to the bottom of the abyssal plains because they usually they don't normally live out in the open oceans. They tend to live more close to the continental shelf or the continental slope, where there's still going to be some algae around because they 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 live in basically in the shallow water, especially in nutrient poor shallow water in the same areas where coral would live. That's where uh, the the chemicals necessary for them to create that shell, that calcareous carbonate shell. Uh, needs to be only working. It's going to. It's only going to work if it's a nutrient poor water, and so calcareous ooze is common and uh, not too deep waters, and also in uh, nutrient poor surface water, and so it will it will be usually above the continental shelves or near the continents where the uh, the water has not gotten yet too deep because that's basically when the animals fell, but they since they live close mm -hmm. to the continents, it wasn't so deep. And all right, and then there's also siliceous ooze, and that comes from those diatoms and radiolorians that we talked about in last time. And because this is basically algae, uh, and they can grow, they can they can be show up at any depth because they, they can even show up in the open ocean. And and then when those algae die out there in the open ocean, they will sink to the bottom and form the ooze that's in the, in the abyssal plains. And also, since it's algae based. If the nutrient water, if the surface water is nutrient rich, instead of getting the calcareous ooze, you're going to get siliceous ooze underneath that nutrient rich water because you're going to get a lot of algae growing in nutrient rich water. And you have examples here. This will be a siliceous ooze, which is rich in silicon. And you see a little more of that here at the bottom of the ocean, a little more there. And that will be your example of the calcareous ooze, which is more shell based. And this is obviously magnifying many, many times. And so there are basically two types of sedimentations. You got muds, which are mostly silt and clay mixed in with biogenic sediments. A greatest example is red clay, which can actually be many colors and it populates most of the abyssal plains. And you got, and then you got 40% of the oceans, which is covered with ooze, which is the remains of, of living materials, which can be either calcareous or siliceous. And calcareous is more common in, in shallower waters, especially if the water is nutrient poor. And siliceous can be found on any water, especially if the uh, the water above was nutrient rich. And uh, the siliceous can be found in any water, any water because it will fall from from the top, and the algae can still still grow in the open ocean. 
but the salis calcareous ooze is more common near the continents because that's usually where where most of the animals hang out so that's where the, those shell animals would be the four ruminians now another thing that you need to know nodules are these structures which are found sometimes deep into the water in the abyssal plains and they look like potato lump shaped rocks and you see some examples here on the screen and they're basically uh, minerals that get trapped in the sand and the sand gets compressed around the minerals and forms a crystal that uh, gets all dirtied up with the different kind of sediments that picks up as it grows and so imagine this minerals a bunch of minerals that get crystallized and compressed into a blob of sedimentation that gets pressed by the water pressure into our actual rock and that's what a nodule actually is and it starts all bec it, the process starts when minerals of a certain type all combine together and it jump starts the process and then sand gathers on top of that and it becomes a rock and if you crack the rock in half you actually see uh, like you see here right in the middle the insides and all the minerals which are present and so nodules are a very interesting feature that shows up only in the bottom of the ocean sea. if you see a nodule even if you see it in land it definitely formed at some point at the bottom of the ocean so uh, that would basically mean that that nodule that piece of land was once under the ocean because nodules are peculiar and it can only form under the ocean where the high pressure of the water can actually compress that in, with the currents and sedimentations and form layers of rock around the sediments and these are actually very interesting because if you were to find and mine these nodules you can you can actually get a lot of resources and, and special uh, minerals out of these uh, out of these uh, potato lump shape of rocks so they're a very interesting feature of the bottom of the ocean as well and it has to do with sediments because it's uh, it forms when sediments basically gather around uh, layers of, of, of trace minerals in the bottom of the ocean and there you have it. This, this is a, a general overview of uh, ocean sediments, the, the, the two different types, inorganic versus organic sources, which create either mousse, ooze or muds. And then you also have nodules. All right, that's a total rundown, and I hope you learned a lot.